Hi, grade 12s. And so we're on to the last rule for differentiation, which is the chain rule, which is by far my favorite. Um, it's definitely the most interesting. And the chain rule is used, I like the word chain because it's almost like, you know, it's part of a chain, the one follows the next. And it is like that because um, the chain rule is used for composite functions. And by composite functions, we mean when you have a function within another function. So I always think of this as a function inside another function. And we actually go are going to use the words the outside function and the inside function. So the rule looks really complicated and weird and then we'll practice and then it's actually quite simple. So basically if f is the outside function, now by outside function we often talk about an exponent. Um, if you have something inside um, in a bracket to the power of something, that's the outside function. Um, g of x is going to be denoted here as the inside function. And what this rule says is that what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate the outside function. So differentiate the outside function. And you'll notice inside this f dashed is g. So you leave the inside alone. Now that's where most people get stuck is when you differentiate the outside function, you completely ignore the inside function and you just leave it be. Then you multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So again, it's almost like each thing gets its chance to be differentiated. So we don't do both at once. We don't differentiate the outside and the inside at once. So definitely much easier when we look at an example. So let's have a look at example one. Example one says you have determined dy dx. I'm just using that notation to just practice other notations. If y equals. Now, what two functions do we have here? We have an outside function, which is something cubed. And then we have an inside function, which is 3x squared plus 1. So those are my two different functions that's going on here. Now, what does the rule say? The rule says that the derivative with respect to x is we must differentiate the outside function. Now this is the outside function, so it would differentiate to bring down the 3 and subtract 1 from the exponent. So it's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring down the 3, I'm going to subtract 1 from the exponent. But now what goes inside is remember we leave the inside function alone. So that's where people go wrong. They differentiate the outside and then inside they differentiate the inside as well. Now just be careful, you leave the inside alone. So differentiate the outside leave the inside, multiply by now I differentiate this inside function, which would be 6x. Now I would probably um, simplify this a little bit, simply because it's very easy and I think they would expect you to go, hang on, that's 18x, 3x squared plus 1 squared. We would definitely not expect you to square this bracket out and to collect up like terms because that's just a pointless exercise, but we would expect you to neaten up what you can easily. And there we go. That's our first example of the chain rule. So differentiate the outside, leave the inside alone, multiply by, differentiate the inside. So let's have a look at another one. First of all, I'm tempted to think that this is a product because I see a 3 here and I'm like, hang on, doesn't this make it a product because it's 3 times something? But just be careful, this is not a function of x. And because it's not a function of x, I wouldn't view this as a product. I mean, you could, but you're making your life painful for no reason. It's not a function of x, and so this is not a product. Instead, this is a chain rule because your outside function is the fact that you've got 3 something to the power of 4. So your inside function is the fact that you have 2 plus 1 over x. Now, first of all, if I just look at that 2 plus 1 over x, mm, this worries me. That's not ready to be differentiated. Because remember, my first basic rule of differentiation needed everything with its own exponent at the top. So personally, what I would do here is just quickly get this y ready before I differentiate it. So I'd prefer to write this as 2 plus x to the minus 1 to the power of 4. Now, we could actually multiply this out. To the power of 4 is not too big. We could multiply a binomial times a binomial times a binomial times a binomial. But what a mission. So what we're now going to do is we're going to find dy dx because it's now possible 
and I'm going to think of my outside function as I've said as 3 something to the power of 4. So how would this differentiate? I would bring down the 4 and I'd get 12, leave the something, minus 1. So it's exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to bring down the 4 and I get 12, something to the power of 3. And that something is you leave the inside function, so I can actually write this as 1 over x if I want to, you leave that inside function alone. Now I'm going to multiply by the derivative of that inside function. And my inside function is now 2 plus x to the minus 1. Now, of course, none of this which I'm writing here I'd actually write in an exam. I'm just thinking. Now, that would differentiate to, well, the 2 would differentiate to 0, and that's a very easy normal rule that we've been doing. So I'd bring down the exponent and subtract 1 from the exponent. Now. You don't have to write anything ever with um, a positive exponent because you don't really care. So you are welcome to write this as ne negative 12 x to the minus 2 multiplied by the bracket cubed. You could put that x to the minus 2 to the bottom, but negative exponents are not a hassle for us in AP Maths. Okay, so that was quite an interesting one. We're slowly getting there. Okay, let's look at C. Question C, again, why would I think of this as a chain rule? I would think of this as a chain rule because a square root, which often comes up in the chain rule, is exactly the same as an exponent of a half. And so my outside function is because I have something to the power of a half. Something to the power of a half. And my inside function is going to be that 5x squared plus 3x. So very, very, very common that we will have um, roots in a chain rule. So what is dy dx now that I'm ready to differentiate? Well, differentiate the outside function. Now if I look at the outside function, I'm going to bring down the half, so it's a half. I'm going to leave the inside alone, 5x squared plus 3x, and I'm going to minus 1 from the exponent. Now I'm going to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is 10x, notice I need the bracket, plus 3. Okay, now how simplified does this need to be? Um, I would probably just neaten it up a little bit. Do you have to take that negative a half to the bottom? You really don't have to. You can if you want to. In fact, I probably wouldn't neaten this up at all because there's not really anything I can do. I could distribute the half into each of those, but oh, I don't think that's any better. So if you really wanted to, you could write this as 10x plus 3 all over and the 2's at the bottom. And if I move this to the bottom, I can either write it as a root or with just an exponent of a half. But that would really not be necessary in the AP Math setting. Right, moving on to D. Now, D would be quite tempting to see this as a quotient because there's something on the top, which I could think of as uh, function number 1, and there's something on the bottom. Now, I personally wouldn't see this as a quotient rule because... This, is, this top here is not a function of x. And if it's not a function of x, it's going to differentiate to nothing anyway. And so if you don't have two functions of x, rather don't see it as a quotient rule because it's unnecessary. Now what I would do is if I don't want to see it as a quotient rule, I need to bring this 3x minus 1 to the top with a negative exponent. And now it's very clearly a chain rule because my outside function is the fact that I've got something to the minus 4 and my inside function is the 3x minus 1. So I'm just going to follow the rules and the rule says that the derivative of y with respect to x would be, now I'm going to differentiate the outside, so I'm going to bring down the minus 4, leave the inside alone subtract 1. Now don't forget, most people will write minus 3 because they think 4, 3. Just be careful it was negative. So subtract 1, multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is as simple as 3. Now this is an example of where I would continue to simplify because this is much more simply written as negative 12, 3x minus 1 to the minus 5. You don't have to put that um, to the bottom with a positive exponent because we really don't care. Right, so getting there. Let's look at the next one. Again, this one I would not see as a quotient rule because 1 at the top is not a function of x. So I would bring this x squared plus 1 to the top 
and notice it will now have a negative exponent and it'll be one third because it was a cube root. So now this is definitely a chain rule and my outside function is the fact that you've got something to the negative one third and my inside function is your x squared plus one. So if I go find my derivative dy dx is equal to so now we differentiate the outside function which is bring down your exponent leave your inside function alone subtract one which is now minus four over three multiply by the derivative of your inside function which is 2x and I'd probably just neaten this up by writing minus 2x over 3 at the front and this x squared plus 1 to the minus 4 over 3 and there we go so definitely quite a lot of fun the chain rule so just our last example for the chain rule before we start the lesson on mixing all of these because often you need to do the chain within the quotient or the quotient within the train it's quite fun so Example 2 says, if you have f of x, which is root of x plus 1, and you have g of x, which is x squared minus 4, can I find the derivative of f of g of x? Well, my first question would be, what is f of g of x? So f of g of x is the root, because the outside function is f, and instead of writing x, I'm going to write x squared minus 4. So it's x squared minus 4 plus 1 which is actually the root of x squared minus 3. Now, as a derivative, this is an easy question, but this question was just trying to assess, can you do a composite function? Can you figure out what a composite function is? So it's quite a nice way to test composite functions. So that's f of g of x. So now what's the derivative of f of g of x? Okay, now, in order to do this, I probably need to realize the fact that this is equal to and I should have actually done this below but anyway this is x squared minus 3 to the power of a half so I probably would have should have written that below and gotten it ready for differentiating before I started it okay now this is quite an easy one because we've been doing this the in outside let's start with the outside the outside function is the fact that you've got f you've got something to the power of a half which was actually what f was and your inside function, let me use a different color, my inside function is your x squared minus 3. Now notice my inside function isn't actually g because there was a plus 1 already. So my inside function actually morphed into x squared minus 3. So what's my derivative? Well my derivative is bring down the exponent of a half, leave the inside alone, subtract 1 so it's minus a half, multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. And now if I neaten that up a bit, because the 2's can cancel, it's actually x, x squared minus 3 to the negative a half. Perfect. So I, sh I don't know, I probably should state here that there's actually a restriction to this, because whatever's under the root sign has to be greater than 0. So what's under the root sign here is x squared minus 3. So I should probably state that x minus 3 has to be greater than or equal to 0, otherwise this is, this is um, non-real, which actually means that x has to be between root 3 and negative root 3, which I probably should state, simply because there was a restriction. But technically that means I should probably state that restriction in other places as well. Now the only other place, I suppose we've got c, which had a square root, and so there are restrictions to these derivatives, technically. Great, so that's the chain rule. So third rule done. So now the fun begins where we begin to mix these all. How cool.